arrived. I'm in good time to get myself a flight in the Goodyear blimp. The aerodrome looks like it caters mostly for the smaller aircraft. I don't even know what some of the things are. Like, uh, from posh looking microlites to very small looking Cessnas. Gorgeous hangar. And uh, a lot of Goodyear flags flapping in the wind. I do believe there is food and drink to be had, so I may just go for a second lunch before uh, finding out where I get my boarding card and ticket to fly. Okay, can you all hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Mike Narantic. How long have you been flying these things? Um, uh, I've been flying airships for uh, for 26 years, and I've been flying uh, aircraft uh, for eight years before that, so it's 34 years total. What's the main difference between flying this and other aircraft? Um, oh, it's just totally different. It's the difference between flying a helicopter to flying an aeroplane and vice versa. It's just uh, it's slower, It's uh, there's more in more things involved and sometimes it's easier sometimes it's harder more fun yeah it can be <laughs> except for tricky days like today what's the kind of uh, wind speed limit before you got to be kept on the ground we accept anything between 10 to 15 uh, knots on the ground anything above 15 knots we keep a close eye on uh, it depends on what the wind aloft is if the winds aloft are anywhere in excess of 20 25 knots we need a good reason to be airborne uh, how many airships in the UK? Uh, there's only this one here at the moment in the UK, but we've got one in the south of Europe, and we hope to be back probably in about four or five months' time. In the world? Oh, you've got me there. I mean, we operate something like seven worldwide. We've got uh, one in Japan. We've got uh, of this particular type. We've got uh, five, I think, in the in the States. And uh, yeah, it. Um, and now with the summer season coming on, we get more online all the time there's uh, there's a lot of interest in um, uh, hybrid uh, air lighter than air vehicles um, there's uh, military interest because of their stability their long endurance um, you can uh, uh, at the moment there's uh, there's widespread military applications uh, being looked into for airships in fact this particular one at uh, one stage was in Bosnia doing uh, mine seeking so um, but uh, the, the, because of their stability, because of their long endurance, we can carry cameras, can use them for advertising, for filming sporting events, for uh, reconnaissance, for uh, surveillance, uh, geophysical, all sorts of applications. Pretty amazing that they should be used in, in war zones because they're pretty obvious and not particularly fast moving. Yeah, I mean, they get up high enough and uh, probably won't even see them. Uh, these are going to be, there's a lot of talk about unmanned uh, aerial vehicles that are uh, that will get up to very very high heights, um, but uh, yeah, as I said, uh, you know, th there's there's a lot of interest now. And if I wanted to uh, get myself an airship, how much would I look at forking out? They're uh, they're quite expensive. Um, it's not uh, it, it's not something that I mean you would. It ranges in the millions. It could cost you three, four million pounds, uh, depending on the size, depending on what equipment you have on board, etc. So there's um, this this one here in particular is a smaller version. We're using it mainly for filming and advertising, and that's relatively inexpensive at two or three million pound. Two or three million. Well, thank you very much for today's flight. Thoroughly enjoyable. <laughs>